Hi, this is Trey Pastor. Welcome to my review of Crisis on Infinite Earths, Part 2, which is actually on Batwoman, which came out today on Batwoman at 8 o'clock. Um, this episode, haha, this review, and this review is going to have spoilers in it, so be prepared. Okay, everybody's still sad and messed up because Oliver died. He you know, made the ultimate sacrifice, so an extra billion people in that couple of minutes he, he was still extra fighting. They managed to get an extra billion people off the earth, so he died truly a hero. And of course, uh, they're still pissed about it. His daughter, of course, rightly is mad about it. And uh, the monitor is saying that that's not the way he foresaw Oliver's death. And of course, the flat, you know, Barry's upset and pissed off. And of course, they want to re resurrect Oliver. They want to bring him back. And, you know, Sarah's trying to warn his daughter, listen, you know, the Lazarus Pit, you know, because he, I guess Barry has told her about the Lazarus Pit, and he's, she's telling him, listen, the Lazarus Pit, you know, you come back, but you're not the same. You don't come back with your soul, and you come back all screwed up. And, you know, he's trying to tell her, but, you know, they're not having it, and they want to bring Oliver back. And that's kind of like a side plot that's going on along with the main plot. The main plot here is that the uh, monitor just says they need four, rec four recruits, four uh, paragons, a virtue that's supposed to actually help, you know, stop the, uh, you know, stop the multiverse from ending. Okay, and one is courage, truth, and all, you know, like four different things. And so he sends off certain ones to get certain things. Why? The Flash, he couldn't send off the Flash to do that because they're doing their little own side plot, <laughs> you know, trying to resurrect, you know, Oliver. Like going to, you know, looking for an Earth that has a Lazarus pit, and they actually locate one, and they head off to go with, you know, Sarah, Barry, and his daughter, and Constantine, and, Const and she brings, Sarah rightly brings Constantine with her because they said, we need to bring Oliver back, but we need to get, you know, bring him back with his soul so he can come back not insane. Like, you know, people that get resurrected, they don't come back the right way they, unless they have their soul. They don't come back the way they, you know, the same way they went in. Anyway, so basically, uh, we also find out the Book of Destiny that the Monitor has it, and he went back in time to get it. And he actually has it in on the Ray Rider where they're on. And of course we see Lex Luthor, you know, Harbridge is, is looking around and she hears voices in her head and she actually goes into the library and see Lex Luthor actually playing with you know, looking in the book and then he you know, and he, she tells him he's you know, he tells she tells him that he's not supposed to do that and he says, Well, you're not supposed to do a lot of things and then he closes the books and he vanishes in a in a time wave. So he's off with the book, and she tells the monitor. But the monitor is basically saying that everybody has their, you know, their price to, you know, plot or role to play in this plot. So like he purposely wanted Lex Luthor to steal it, okay? Because we know what Lex Luthor is going to do. He, his main mission is to destroy, you know, all the Supermans in all the worlds. So that's basically what he's doing. He's going off to destroy all the Supermans in all the worlds, okay? And we also see in this episode we bring in uh, Iris, and she's supposed to go on a mission with uh, Lois and Clark to find, you know, you know, because there's a, a Superman on one of these worlds that's like the paragon of, of, of truth, and they have to basically find him, and they, they actually find, actually, that Lex Luthor's going around killing all the Supermans on all the worlds, and we actually see, a, like, a nod to the death of Superman, where we see on another Earth, they actually see it on a, on one of the Earths they visit, you know, Lois and the other, and, and Clark, they, they actually see you know, like a nod to the Death Superman with this his cape, you know, flying in the breeze and Lois crying of, of his dead body. And I thought it was a nice touch, nice touch to the comics and the animated stuff. I thought it was a really nice touch to do that. And so they're basically going around looking. And they actually, and this is where you get the Tom Welling cameo, where they actually go to, you know, Smallville, to his Earth. And we actually find out, you know, that he's there. You know, they go to recruit him and find out that he's Clark Kent. And they ask him, but before he, they can actually get and tell them what they're there for. Lex Luthor appears and makes them vanish, <laughs> go you know back to the Wave Rider, and then he has the confrontation with uh, Tom Welling, <laughs> aka you know aka Clark Kent, aka Superman, and he pulls out and he basically tells him you know he's Lex Luthor and he says, you know he says Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor's the president. On his earth, Lex Luthor becomes the president, and <laughs> and, and Lex Luthor says, listen, John Cryer goes, this doesn't matter that. It, my main is to wipe out all the Superman. So he pulls out a piece of kryptonite, and actually, uh, Clark Kent actually 
picks it up and looks at it and then, you know, like tosses it away. <laughs> and he basically tells him, listen, I gave up my powers a long time ago. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, you know. And of course, Azuka is pissed off that he can't kill this guy because he's, he's just a regular Joe. He gave up his, he gave all the powers of a god. He gave it all that up. So he's rightly pissed off at him <laughs> for doing that and tries to throw a punch where he just catches it and just <laughs> slaps him away, which is okay. And then, of course, he grabs the book and decides to go off to another earth. He said he's not worth it. And then we see the appearance by Eric Durant as Lois Lane, and they go off and talking about their daughters and stuff. And, they, and so that's a little cameo. I'm still kind of pissed off you don't get. You know, it's still no Tom Welling in the Superman suit, which I think is still, 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 you know, he doesn't want to do that. So I, I'm still pissed off by that, but it's just my own personal thing. But anyway, <laughs> so we see actually Lois and and Clark and Iris, they go to an Earth, another Earth, and they find, you know, they actually find uh, Kingdom Kong Superman. And we, well, he actually, uh, he's actually the editor of the Daily Planet, and we see a wall full of, of, of tributes to a lot of people that died, and we see Lois Lane's name up there, Jimmy Olsen, Petty White, and they explain, you know, he explains to them, listen, that the Joker, you know, basically lit up a bomb in there and killed all these people, you know, his wife, Lois Lane, and his friends, you know, Jimmy Olsen and Petty White, and they try, you know, to convince him, they said, let's, you know, Lex Luthor is, is going around the world, killing all these other Earths, killing super, we need your help to come back and stop, the, you know, save the multiverse, and he quickly changes it to Superman, which is really cool. And then the other Superman changes in, you know, to Superman, which is really cool. And then Lex Luthor shows up and he gets them to, you know, he, he uses the Book of Destiny and some kind of spell to get King and Kong Superman to fight the other Superman. And they have a nice little, uh, like, little five minute battle through the air and stuff. And then he actually, Lois actually convinces him to not, you know, to, to wave off the mind control after she locks out Lex Luthor, which I thought was really funny. She knocks him out, knocks him over the head and takes up and lifts up the book and, and they actually talk him down, the Kingdom Clown Superman, and then they go off back. And then there's another side mission for for uh, Batwoman, Kate Kane and 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 uh, Kara, Supergirl. They have to go to another Earth to find, you know, I think they said the Book of Courage, the Paragon of Courage was supposed to be Bruce Wayne. Okay, and they go to this other Earth where, you know, where the uh, Wayne Manor is like worn down, and, and they actually go in and they see Luke there, that Earth's version of Luke. There, he opens the door and he's all, you know, he looks, he totally looks like totally different from the other. Look, he's not nerdy, and so he looks there with a six pack, and 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 they appear to see Bruce, and they actually see Bruce, and he actually comes down the stairs in this exoskeleton suit. He comes down and basically tells him that, listen, I've, I've gotten this way because of all my injuries over the years. And actually, you know, they, you know, she recognizes Miss Bruce and she, he recognizes her as Kate. But of course, they're not their versions of, of Bruce Wayne and, and Kate Kane. And he basically explains to her that, listen, uh, there's no courage in, anymore. He's, and he just tells her, listen, I started killing people. He said, once you kill one person, you start killing another person. It's obviously that this Bruce Wayne is not the paragon of courage because he started killing people and, and you actually see he has like a a cage full of, of mementos from the people that he's killed. Joker, you see that I think you see the Riddler, and then you even see some glasses in one of the cases and Luke explains to Kara, you know, because Bruce and, and Kate are off in the back cave talking and, and Luke is back with uh Kara and, he, and he's explaining, so yeah, he got that from uh, he came back from killing, you know, from killing Superman, you know, or his, his civilian identity, Clark Kent. <laughs> and and then that's when you see, you know, the glasses there with the blood on them. And, and he explains them. That's how he got into that suit from, you know, from, from, from that fight with Superman. And then you see Kate and Bruce in the in the Batcave. And he's telling her that, you know, to give up hope and... And this world doesn't deserve to be saved, and maybe other worlds don't need to be saved either. So he's, you know, he's far gone, and he's you know, beyond saving. And then you see Supergirl come in there, and she explains to Kate, "Listen, he's beyond saving. He's not the paragon of the courage. Look at his glasses. He killed this Earth Superman." <laughs> and of course, and he says, "Yeah, I did it." And <laughs> and then you see him pull out, and he like swaps Kara, knocks her, 
and you see he has kryptonite, like you said, a little memento from your home planet. He still has it. And then Kate manages to kick him and knock him into some electricity and where he gets fried and electrocuted. And he but he dies, you know, dies. I think he put his, he says one great line, which I remember from Batman v Superman, <laughs> which I thought was a nice touch for them to add that line in there where he goes, uh, the world's making, my parents taught me a different lesson. <laughs> The world doesn't make sense unless you force it to. Which I, I love that line which, uh, when Ben Affleck says that in Batman v Superman. <laughs> I bet you were sent here for a reason. <laughs> I bet your parents thought you were special. <laughs> I love that line. He says, My parents taught me a different lesson dying in the gutter. The world only makes sense unless you force it to. Well, I, I love that line. It's a great line. And they, and you get to Kevin Conroy, you get to repeat that. And I'm glad Kevin Conroy, the, you know, the animated voice of Bruce Wayne, he got to act he had a significant scene in this and he actually didn't play heroic Bruce he played like a a bitter battered broken down Bruce from a different earth so he didn't actually well he he did play Bruce Wayne but he just uh, not the paragon of, cur of courage and then we find out in a roundabout way that actually when they go back to the monitor they think you know Kara thinks that the monitor lied to them that this wasn't that this Bruce wasn't a paragon of courage and he and he go, and he goes yes I you know that wasn't the mission. The mission was for Kate to find to figure out that she's the paragon of, of courage, and Kara was another one of the paragons. She was a paragon of hope, even though she didn't have much hope in the beginning of the episode. And so, there's your, yeah, there's your, so it's actually four. It's, it's supposed to be four: Kara, uh, Kate, uh, Superman, uh, Kingdom Clown Superman, and who, who's the other four? The other one. I'm trying to remember who the other paragon of courage is supposed to be. Well, it's supposed to be four paragons to stop the, you know, stop the, stop the, help stop the crisis. King of Kong, Superman, Kara, uh, Kate. And I'm trying to remember who the other one is, but it doesn't matter. I think they they left that. I think they left that ambiguous just so you can figure it. You know, figure that. I'm trying. Yeah. So anyway. You know, they actually we we go back to the Lazarus pit. And we see them getting ready to you know dunk dead Oliver. You know, uh, Constantine and and uh, Barry go back to get Oliver's body, and we see Jonah Hex shows up where the Lazarus pit is, and he has a brief fight with uh, Sarah and uh, Oliver's daughter, and they you know they slap around, and and Sarah gives this Oliver, Jonah Hex the infamous scar on his face. And you know he knocked, he's knocked out, and then they come back with his body, put him in the Lazarus pit. Of course, he comes out all crazy, and Sarah has to trank him. So, again, we got to see. I guess next episode they'll show you when they actually try to uh, restore his soul, because now he's just a crazy guy. He's still alive now, but he's nuts <laughs> until they resurrect, you know, give him his soul back. So, which will probably be in the next episode. And so, like I, like I, well, I predicted, but like I guessed. That that would be would be just based on the picture that we saw. I saw, yeah. That's how he gets. Ollie gets resurrected, and it's our Ollie, and it's not the other Earth Ollie, which I thought it may be. They may do that, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, then what else? Oh yeah, and the most famous thing. Oh yeah, they actually bring. Like I said they bring back the uh, uh, Kingdom Come Superman. They got Kara and. Uh, and uh, Batwoman, they're the three paragons, but there's supposed to be a fourth one. But I'm trying to remember who was the fourth one. They didn't say who was the fourth one. I'm trying to think who, who they said was the fourth one. Because they went to get Kingdom Come Superman. They went to get uh, uh, Bruce, which actually turned out to be Kate. And then and Kara was Courage. So I think there's supposed to be one more paragon that they didn't get to yet. Okay. But we also, but the way this episode ended was. Cool. We see Lila. Like I said, she was earlier. She was Harbinger. She was hearing voices in her head, and then later, at the, towards the end of the episode, we, you know, you hear her hearing voices, and then all of a sudden, she, you know, she, it sounds like the monitor, and she disappears, and she appears in another place, and she hears a guy talking, saying, you know, basically calling to her and saying he's going to need her, okay? And then you actually see him come out of the darkness, and it's the anti-monitor, and that's his first appearance that we see of the anti-monitor. And he's saying basically he's going to use uh, Harbinger to help you know destroy the, you know, the universes, the Earths, and uh, and you know in the comics, okay, uh, 
Harbinger actually kills the modern. So I'm, I'm assuming they're going to do that, the same thing here. They're going to have her, you know, be, uh, ultimately betray the uh, the monitor. Okay, so, so just so it's playing out similar to the the way the comic book uh, played out. Anyway, uh, again, this episode was good. I think the MVP in this episode uh, was two. I think, well, I think Brandon Baroff as uh, Ray <laughs> and also as Kingdom Come Superman. I thought he was really good. Really, uh, he just you know they played the Superman theme when they when they were at you know meeting him with him and he just I mean he just really <laughs> this it just gave you that uh, Christopher Reeve vibe and that uh, Brandon Roth so I thought he was really good as you know he, you know he was in other scenes as as Ray Palmer the Adam and also in the scenes as Kingdom Come Superman and I thought he was really good just knocked that out of the park and also I think Kara again was really good you know Melissa but now she does angst really good and like I said, she was like hopeless, even though she was like the virtue, the person, the paragon of hope. She was kind of hopeless for most of this episode until the end where she actually convinced, you know, Kate that she's the, actually the paragon of courage. Yeah, yeah. But there you go. But then, then, like I said, they had their that own side plot, the whole side plot with, uh, uh, with um, the Flash and, them, Flash and Sarah and Constantine and uh, all of his daughter resurrecting him, going to the Lazarus Pit. Which I thought was kind of, you know, like the monitor wouldn't be concerned about that, but that was a side plot and it happened. Okay, the only good, the other good thing is, like I said, they had Mick there and he was taking care of the, uh, while they went off to find the King of Cosmos, man, he was taking care of uh, you know, Lois and Clark's baby and he was the only one that could calm it down. <laughs> so I thought this was always funny. And also, we got to hear Lennox Snart on that, you know, the, they went to get to the Wave Rider on that different earth and Mick's voice was actually <laughs> the, uh, the ship's voice, which I thought was a nice touch to throw that in there. <laughs> so that was that was that was cool. Anyway, uh, so it ended like I said with Lila Harbinger meeting the anti monitor, and he's saying he's going to need her, and so we can pretty much figure it's going to probably go the way of the comics, where she's going to be the, you know, the like the secret weapon that she's going to wind up killing the monitor. Exactly, I think that's going to happen. So next episode she'd bring in the. Uh, Black Lightning from the trailer. It looks like we're finally going to get to the Black Lightning part. Black Lightning's going to get brought into the story, and so which is good. And and I think other pe people, to other things that we should happen. But it was nice. Like I said Kevin Conroy was good in this, and we got him to see, got him to play a broken down Bruce Wayne. Beat, you know, and he got to say that great line from Batman v Superman, which I thought was cool and stuff. And even though he you know he died, he was a bit of a you know let's say he was a dick. He was a a Batman that had been broken and and started killing and stuff and so it kind of made sense that you know that he was kind of like batman v superman batman taken to the extreme okay and there was nobody to bring him back so you know so i think that was nice that kept you get to get kevin conroy to play that and he got to actually play a live action bruce wayne so i thought that was cool okay still that woman does i'm sorry ruby rose does nothing for me i'm sorry she's a horrible actress i'm sorry that's i keep saying that but that's reality but we got to get the only other good part was that she found a picture of that Earth's, uh, you know, Kate and and her sister, and they looked happy, looked different, and they looked, you know, and of course this that Earth's Kate had actually got murdered. That was one of the, another one of the reasons why this Bruce uh, Wayne from that Earth went crazy because she got she took up the mantle of Batwoman and got killed. Okay, and so then again, so another reason for him to why he went insane. But anyway, uh, you let me know what you think. Have you seen episode two or part two of Batwoman, which is part two of Crisis? What do you think of it? Uh, feel free to leave comments down below and uh, let me know what you think. I have links to my social media in the description box, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also have a link to my other channel, more views and opinions. Please check that out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.